Hi there, my name is Kelly Goff, and I'm a columnist with The Daily Beast, and I'm here on day number three at the Women in the World Summit 2014. I'm sitting here in the Toyota Solutions studio, and I am joined by Asenath Andrews, who is one of the panelists here today, and she has done some extraordinary work with teen girls and young women that she's going to tell us all about. Asenath, great to have you here. Great to be here. Glad to meet you. So um, I know that you are the founder of a school. Can you tell our audience a little bit about the school and what, what sets it apart from some of the other uh, institutions that are already out there? Um, our school is a school for pregnant parenting teens and their children. And we also, I think one of the things that kind of takes people by surprise is that we have a working farm on the school grounds. Wow. So we grow vegetables and milk goats and breed rabbits and collect eggs and make cheese. <laughs> we do a lot of different things at our school. We've also done some work um, with uh, sending students to South Africa and uh, last year we sent some kids to Ethiopia to work with some midwives in Ethiopia so they built solar helmets so as the midwives were doing deliveries they would have ready light and they wouldn't have to worry about electrical source out in the rural communities. Okay, I just have to say, the way that you've described the school, I think there are a lot of people who wish they had gone to a school like <laughs> this. <laughs> but your school is special because it, it, special, it, 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 it's it for pregnant and parenting teens and their children. But we do have about 5-10% of girls who are not pregnant or parenting who we call the aunties. Oh, wow. So those are sometimes girls who've lost their children or um, whose sisters came to our school and just did such a turnaround. They were going, this school is magic, I've got to come. And so they come, they have to get special permission from the superintendent and they're admitted. Um, but they're like neighbor kids, you know, so if you act crazy or misbehave, see you babe, you go home. But almost never happens. Almost. And you have an incredible success rate in terms of graduation and, and tell, tell our audience a little bit about that. We, um, it is really difficult to to uh, calculate a, a graduation rate the way regular schools do because we don't know at what age or what grade kids will get pregnant. So we mm. get kids at every grade and every age depending on when they get pregnant. So some years ago the National Association for Secondary School Principals took our 11th to 12th grade graduation and used that as our graduation rate which is 90%. I think what's more significant is that every single girl who graduates from our school is accepted to a two or four year college before she leaves because it's required that you apply and get accepted. This is not a time when you can manage just going to high school. <clears throat> you can't support yourself, let alone support yourself and a child with just a high school education. And I want kids to know that that's my expectation. I went to college because my parents expected me to go to college. I want my girls to know that you have to go to college because that's what I expect. They may not go that first year, they may not go the second year, but whenever I see them, if they haven't gone, whenever I see them, no matter how old they are, they go, I'm going back, I'm going back, I, I'm just finishing this, or I'm just doing this, but I'm going back. Which puts in their sort of being that they're able. Mm -hmm. Whether they choose to right now, it's okay, because they're able. And sometimes once you, have a child, people discount you and count you out. So that's not, not my girls. Well, it's so interesting because one of the things that I realized is, is um, uh, because I have a family that has diverse class differences throughout mm -hmm. the family, mm -hmm. but I realized that one of the, the key dif distinctions is that for, for me growing up, it was never a question of if, if I go to college, it was always when what go. college will you go to. Absolutely, mine too. And, and it does make a difference oh in terms of how you, sort of how, you do push, how you do everything. And you know, the, the threat in my house was if you, well, if you don't, you don't get good grades, don't go to college, then you'll be cleaning houses in Birmingham, which is a suburb in Detroit. So it was always when you go to college, this, then you got to get good grades to go to college. It's, but I'm first generation college. And um, I could not have been more shocked than when I got to undergrad and these girls were talking about graduate school in the dorm and I'm going oh my god there's more school right there's more school because someone was studying for an exam and was like oh my god this will bring my GPA down I won't be able to get in graduate school one of the things that my parents prepared me even though they hadn't gone to school was that you can look up everything I don't my father would just be insane if he were alive to get on the internet because he mm. was such a books do it and yep and um, 
So I went to the library the next day. I did all this work trying to figure out what a graduate school was and why you had to go. And um, I wanted, I wish I could give my girls that kind of love of learning. Mm -hmm. But even if they don't love to learn, they have to love to be able to determine their own future. Uh, I think that's very and that's, that's what that's what college does. It gives you the capacity to make choices for your life and determine your own future and for my girls' future of their children. So what led you to found the Katherine Ferguson Academy? <sighs> um, Uh-oh, <laughs> you said this like it's a very long story. It is. It's usually a seven-minute interview, but... <laughs> and then, you know, seven minutes wouldn't even start to it. But this lady I met just said, hey, we got this school. I was working on a PhD in psychology, and so you I did go to more school. Just to clarify, did, you didn't end up staying did, in school. God, going I hated to more it. More I hated it. Um, I really thought I should be able to just give you a check and get them, you know, give me the send the thing in the mail. But they make you go to class and stuff. So um, this woman called me, and um, there was this little program for pregnant girls, and I was one of the founding members of not founding members, but one of the first members of uh, the Women's Network for administ Women Administrators in Detroit. So I had this kind of feminist rep, um, the whole lot We like that. feminist reps here at yeah, the Women in the World we Summit. we do, but black women and... I know, it's a compli there are complications it, with the they, word. They, they really are. With the F word, as Espe I like to call yes, it. Yes, especially, you know, 30 years ago. Mm. So. Um, so I went over and really I stayed because they had stained glass windows in the building and it was, I used to be an art teacher. So it was like, oh, what, how can learning not be wonderful in a building with stained glass windows? And the rest is just, I was stuck. History. And so now you're here being a history maker and changing things. Can you talk a little bit about how women in the world, and I know you've, I, you've been here before and how yeah. some of the relationships you've built here have helped you in the work that you do? It is pretty incredible. The the diversity of women who show up here. Um, not just the women on the stage, but the women you meet over coffee or the women you meet in the lavatory or um, just walking back to the hotel. I, I don't think I was really aware of some of the issues outside of the United States or outside of Detroit or outside of my school. You get so focused on what's going on where you are and especially if you're in the business of trying to fix what's going on where you are or change what's going on. So you sometimes, or I sometimes, just lose sight of the bigger world. Although it's kind of ironic because part of my goal for my girls is to create a, a broader worldview that they don't, that they know the world is bigger than their neighborhood. Right. So they can but dream beyond that. Absolutely, absolutely. Because if you don't, you know, people, uh, the Horatio Alger figured out on your own, maybe it worked when there wasn't a lot to figure out. But now to know that um, there is a world outside Detroit, there's a world outside of Michigan, there's a world outside the United States. So we've, we take every opportunity we can to get kids out of that school and out of the city and of recent <coughs> years out of the country. So um, the Toyota, um, the Toyota Award has really given us a chance to do some other things, to do some different things, to help kids create um, some companies and bid on jobs around the school. And we had a think tank that we've wow. given some kids an opportunity to plan an intentional community and design houses, tiny and small houses. So it is, um, it's a place, this is a place where you get kind of excited about learning again. At the beginning of, um, the day when I make announcements, the last thing I say to my girls is, when you leave here today, you should be smarter than you were when you got here, because smart is what you get, not what you are. <coughs> and so I come here to get smarter. Okay. <laughs> well, we all come to hear women like you and to get inspired, So, and, uh, and you are definitely doing that. You're an inspiration, you. and so thank it was you. great to have you here in the Toyota Solutions Studio, Good to meet you. Um, especially since you're doing such extraordinary work, and then Toyota was able to play a small part in that. Um, so thanks so much for, for and we look forward to seeing you at next year's conference, hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kelly Goff, and we are here in the Toyota Solutions Studio at the Women in the World Summit. I've been joined by Sina Andrews, who's the extraordinary founder of the Katherine Ferguson Academy and also a Toyota Award recipient here at the conference. So thanks for joining us.